for one element if you have access to successive ionization energies it also gives you information about shells and subshells if we look at this element now we always uh, do log base 10 of ionization energy in order to have nicer graph going if you look at this uh, i see there are one two three electrons that are easy to remove and then i see my first gap so there is a gap here and then one to eight electrons sort of nicely trend wise to remove and then i see my final gap here so this will tell me look i have three shells to deal with so this is shell number one very close to the nucleus this is shell number two and this is your valence shell so you have three valence electrons according to this three valence electrons and it's the easiest to remove uh, because you are further away from the nucleus then you have eight electrons on the second shell and finally you have two electrons that are very close to uh, nucleus very difficult to remove two electrons close to the nucleus difficult to remove now the question is what is this element well we have 13 electrons three valence electrons it is aluminum it's 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p1 now we can even tell you which is which the first one here this is 3p1 the easiest to remove then next to it you go to a subshell slightly lower closer to the nucleus and it's slightly difficult slightly difficult to remove the first jump here indicates that you have gone to inner shell you are dealing with uh, 2p6 which is the first six electrons 2p6 and finally you're getting into another subshell which is 2s2 and then the last two electrons are actually your first two electrons very close to the nucleus so that's how you should dissect it now IB loves to give you data and ask you to be able to identify between elements if you look at element X the first four ionization energies are given 496 then you see a 4500 6900 so the gap or the inflection point that you see is here and that's indication that you only have one valence electron so it should be uh, in group number one now is it hydrogen is it lithium is it sodium is it potassium definitely not hydrogen definitely not lithium because hydrogen has only one electron lithium has three electrons so it could be sodium or potassium but at least we know the group number if you look at element Y, then I see 700 something, 1400, which is almost twice as much. This going there is multiplied by two. Then I see a humongous jump between the second and the third. So the gap is in this case here. This will tell you you have two valence electron. You should belong to group number two. You could be, uh, you could even be beryllium in this case because you have four electrons now the very last uh, slide for this is a generic uh, number for groups versus ionization energies and i just want you to look at it gently so you realize the the inflection points that you're looking for group one there is big gap between the first number and second so this is your valence electron if you go to group two like magnesium the first two numbers are close the third is very uh, far away and that's the gap that you see group 13 or 3 the first three electrons and then there is a gap silicon is in group number 4 or 14 you see four electrons that are sort of trend wise to remove and the fifth electron is difficult phosphorus you have one two three four five valence electron gap sulfur which is group six is one two three four five six and then there is a gap and chlorine finally for halogens which have seven valence electron you will see seven of them have nice trend and then uh, the last one if it shows there should be a gap which i don't have that information